Good morning, all you Grace Church climbers, saplings, seedlings, and anyone else who is watching this video. It's great to be with you. Can you remember which book of the Bible we've been studying for the last two weeks? And we're going to be studying for the next four or five weeks. It's the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to one of his followers, one of his first disciples, one of the apostles, Matthew. And this book is in the second part of the Bible, which is God's word to us. The first part of the Bible leads up to when the Son of God became a human being when Jesus Christ came into the world, was born a baby. And the second part is what happened when he came and after he died, rose again and went to heaven. So we're in what we call the New Testament, Matthew. And do you remember over the last couple of weeks, we've been learning from King Jesus. We've been learning First of all, that when we come to him, when we want to follow him, we have nothing to give. It all comes from him. We have to come him as people who need a saviour and a teacher. And if we are going to follow him, we learned last week that we need to be salt and light. That uh, we make a difference in the world. And that people see how we live and what we are like. And they in turn may follow him. And we pray that they do. And how we are and how we behave and what we're like is at the root of what we're going to learn this morning. Remember we're in the, the book of Matthew and we're in chapter 5 and we're going to read verses 43 to 48. You have heard it said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? And not even the tax collectors are doing that. And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Wow, that's quite a challenge, isn't it? Be perfect as your heavenly Father, as God is perfect. We'll come back to that later. But first of all, I want you to do a bit of detective work. Do you see that in the early part of our reading, at the beginning in fact, Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. Well, in the first part of the Bible, some of those words are said, are taught. So what I want you to do in a minute is to get with mum or dad or your older brother or sister and look up in the Old Testament, that first part of the Bible, before King Jesus came to earth, and the book is called Leviticus. Leviticus. It's chapter 19 and verse 18. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. And I want you to be detectives and check from that passage in the Old Testament, when Jesus says, you have heard, is that what they've heard? 
Is that what God's word has actually said? So I'll pause the tape now and we'll come back and we can think about what you've discovered in that passage. How did you get on? Well, Leviticus 19 verse 18. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbour as yourself. Really hard, isn't it? I've got to love people in my family, people I meet at school, as much as I love myself. Really hard. But that's all it says there. And yet Jesus says in our passage today, you've heard it said, Love your neighbour and hate your enemy. So actually, that's not what God's word had said. Do you know what happened? The people who taught the Israelites God's people, they wanted to try and make it possible to obey God's law completely. Um, and they made it easier in some ways. And uh, they said, well, you can hate your enemy. But love your neighbour, love your own people. But Jesus, when he comes, says you've got to go further than that. That's not good enough. Anyone, even the worst people, can love their neighbour, can love their families, can love the people they like, love the people who love them and like them. Anyone can do that. If you want to be my follower, my disciple, my pupil, if you want to be one of my people now, you have got to love your enemy, the people who don't like you, the people who treat you badly. I don't know if any of you have been badly treated at school by someone in your class, maybe an older child, in the playground perhaps. Someone's hurt you. Maybe not physically, but maybe. Or maybe they've said something nasty to you. Or they've done nasty, something nasty to you. Maybe someone does that all the time. Well, someone did that to me. My natural reaction would be to hate them. And get my own back on them. But Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, if you want to be different, if you want to be salt and light in the world, so that other people see that you're different and that you're mine. And ask why you're different and find out it's because you belong to Jesus. Then what I have to do, what you have to do, is to love those people who in many ways are your enemies. They don't love you, they don't like you. Or maybe they do, but they still treat you badly. So they act as if you're, they're, your, they're your enemies. Jesus says, you must love them and pray for them. So if someone is nasty to you, then don't hit back. Don't answer back necessarily. Although you can be firm with people, say, no, that won't do. You mustn't behave like that. But love them and pray for them. Pray that they will come to love the Lord Jesus Christ and not them themselves all the time and thinking about themselves and hurting others. It's a hard thing because Jesus says that we, if we want to follow him, must try and be perfect like he is perfect. Now, we're never going to manage that, but we've got to try with God's help. Let's pray now that we do. Dear King Jesus, we thank you for your wonderful word. We thank you that you teach us. We thank you for how your word developed and that when you claim you explained your word and fulfilled it. We thank you that you forgave your enemies. We fear that you forgave all those who sin against you, which includes us. May we be like you. May we forgive others and pray for them. Show them that we love you. Pray that they too will become followers of you. 
and become members of your glorious kingdom now and forever, that we all might praise you forever together. We ask this for your glorious sake, King Jesus. Amen. There's a, a heart here. So if you can see, uh, it's the activity today for the younger ones anyway. Um, pray for those who hurt me. I should pray for those who hurt me. I should love my enemy. Matthew 5 verse 44. And then you can produce a hand. So here's one that Sue's done. There's a hand and the heart on it. Pray for those who hurt me. Maybe we could all make one of those and look at it every day and think about what Jesus is saying to us. All the very best to you.